The body should know that the senators from Arizona, California, and Ohio, uh, Metzenbaum, Feinstein, and uh, Deaconcini, uh, wish to move early, relatively early tomorrow, on their amendment relative to assault weapons. And so we should have a full day tomorrow, Mr. President, if we can continue the pace and the progress we've made today. I would hope the majority leader would consider keeping us in very late tomorrow night until we finish this legislation. On November 8, 1993, Senator Joe Biden was right. The next day in the Senate was going to be full, full of activity, full of history, full of landmark legislation. With guns very much in the news today and still a legislative priority for Congress, this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly goes back to November 9, 1993, a full day of debate and voting on banning assault weapons, a key component of the landmark legislation, the 1994 Crime Bill. From 1987 to 1995, Joe Biden was chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. While he was chairman, Congress passed a milestone crime bill, which included an assault weapons ban. For 10 years, the manufacture, sale, or possession of 19 assault weapons was banned. Passing that ban involved some novel legislative maneuvering, Senator Biden bypassed his committee and took the bill straight to the floor, where amendments were debated and voted on. Here's a floor exchange Senator Biden had on November 9, 1993, with Orrin Hatch, Republican senator from Utah, who was ranking minority member on the committee. So this is very important. It's important to those of us who fought so hard to get this bill to this point. And frankly, uh, everybody knows that it's a game from here on in if we get into the gun amendments. And I'd like to avoid it. Now, some will say it's not. Uh, uh, some will say that it's not, uh, but it really is. And it's a political game, and I think a cynical political game, if we get into this. Madam President. Uh, the Senator, I'd be happy to yield the floor. Senator from Delaware. Madam President, uh, it is true that I wanted to have, quote, a clean bill. The underlying crime bill, the Biden crime bill, it's to which we're adding all these amendments. Uh, I attempted to put together such a, uh, an agreement. But in fairness to my friends who are about to introduce anti-gun amendments, a horse was let out of the barn uh, uh, a couple days ago, or at least a day ago. My friends are now going to exercise great restraint. What's left to restrain? I mean, you know, uh, well, I guess there's no amendment on jaywalking, death penalty for jaywalking, uh, so there is some restraint. Um, but short of that, there's not a whole lot of restraint that's been uh, moved here. Biden then added, But I want to make it clear. My friends who are about to introduce legislation relating to limitations on access to guns, I support them. I support what they're about to do. We had a tactical disagreement on whether or not it jeopardizes or enhances, not the crime bill. That is not my concern whether it jeopardizes or enhances the prospect of getting what they want to do done. I lost that argument with my friends. They believe, and they, the collective wisdom that they possess uh, is likely to exceed that possessed by the senator from Delaware. It does exceed that exe uh, by the senator of Delaware, but that's where I have been up to now. But that is lost. I lost that argument. A dramatic moment occurred between Idaho Republican Senator Larry Craig and Dianne Feinstein. Senator Feinstein, then a freshman Democrat from California, began her Senate career at the beginning of that year, 1993. In 1969, Feinstein was elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. She served as the board's first female president in 1978, when San Francisco Mayor George Moscone and City Supervisor Harvey Milk were assassinated. Keep that in mind as you listen to this clip from November 9th, 1993. Reality check says that any gun, if the intent of those who hold it is to wreak havoc upon society, it can become an assault weapon. Now that's the whole of the text, and I could go on and on with these kinds of issues. So the gentle lady from California needs to become a little more familiar with firearms and their deadly characteristics. And I say that because it is a personal privilege for a moment, please. Yes, certainly. I am quite familiar with firearms. I became mayor as a product of assassination. I'm aware of I that. I found my assassinated colleague and put a finger through a bullet hole, bullet hole yeah. trying to get 
I proposed gun control legislation in San Francisco. I went through a recall on the basis of it. I was trained in the shooting of a firearm when I had terrorist ha attacks with a bomb at my house when my husband was dying when I had windows shot out. Mm -hmm. Senator, I know something about what firearms can do. Senator, I am not accusing you of not knowing. What I'm accusing you of is not broadening the issue to understand the debate. Because what you just referenced and your tragic experiences, to my understanding, dealt with no assault weapons. That's reality. And your experience is a sad one, and I hope I never have to go through that. But it is legitimate to say in this debate that when you began to ban assault weapons, you are not addressing the problem. The problem is not bound up in taking away guns. The problem is bound up in returning criminals to the streets and allowing them to repeat and repeat and repeat again. After that intense exchange, Senator Biden said he supported the assault weapons provision and he dared Republicans to defeat it. He closed the debate this way, praising Senator Feinstein. But I mean, you're really going to bring this bill down? You're really going to bring this crime bill down and do what you did for two years ago? The last two years, everybody said the real reason why the Republicans filibustered the crime bill, the last two years that we passed in the conference report, was because of habeas corpus. Malarkey. It was about guns then. It's about guns now. The whole world sees it. So why don't we just vote, give the distinguished senator from California who has done a masterful job. I don't know many freshmen who've come here and in this short a time put together such a significant vote. Let's, let's, let's lose gracefully. Let, you know, why don't you lose gracefully? Let the woman win. She's got the votes. Nearly 30 years later, on June 4th, 2022, Matt Visor and Mike DeBonis wrote this in the Washington Post. Biden called Republicans bluff, predicting Republicans were not going to bring down a $21 billion bill because the NRA does not like it. Biden turned out to be correct. Republicans chose not to filibuster the sprawling crime bill over the gun ban, and Feinstein's amendment was incorporated into the crime bill on a 56 to 43 vote. A few weeks after the assault weapons ban passed the Senate, the Long Island Railroad shooting. On December 7, 1993, aboard a Long Island Railroad train in New York, Passenger Colin Ferguson began firing at other passengers with a semi-automatic pistol. Six were killed, 19 wounded, before Ferguson was tackled and held down by other passengers. The next day, talking with reporters at the Blair House, President Bill Clinton discussed the shootings. He mentioned Senator Feinstein and the assault weapons ban. Could you give us your reaction to the shootings on Long Island? Well, first of all, it's a terrible human tragedy, and my sympathies go out to all the families involved. Uh, I, I will say, I think we have to note that uh, the uh, the gun that was used contained uh, apparently uh, two 15-round clips that were expended while this man in a manic state was walking down the uh, subway aisle. And uh, one of the reasons we ought to pass the crime bill is that Senator Feinstein's amendment to limit assault weapons would make those 15-round clips illegal. They are not necessary for hunting or sports purposes, and it simply allows you to shoot and wound more people more quickly. So I, I hope that, that, that this will give some more impetus to the need to act urgently uh, to deal with, the, with the, the, the unnecessary problems of gun violence in the country. Next stop for the assault weapons ban, the House of Representatives. Chuck Schumer, then a representative from New York and now Senate Majority Leader, took the lead for sponsoring it in the House. On May 2, 1994, he and other House Democrats met with President Clinton at the White House. Afterward, a reporter asked this question of Congressman Schumer. Traditionally, though, lawmakers have found it safer to vote against gun control than for it. What's different this time around? What's different is the public. You used to pay a price. You've always paid a price when you vote against the NRA, but now people are learning they're paying a price when they vote with the NRA. That's the big difference. Congressman Schumer's amendment to prohibit the manufacturer, transfer, or possession of a semi-automatic assault weapon passed the House the next day, May 5, 1994, by a vote of 216 to 214. 
The crime bill, with the 10-year assault weapon ban intact, passed Congress in August 1994. President Clinton signed it into law at a White House ceremony on September 13, 1994. This bill makes it illegal for juveniles to own handguns, and yes, without eroding the rights of sportsmen and women in this country, we will finally ban these assault weapons from our street that have no purpose other than to kill. Standing right behind President Clinton on stage, Senator Joe Biden, also in attendance at the White House that day, then New York City Republican Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Kara Hulse, the longtime sharp observer of Congress for the New York Times, wrote in 2019, the circuitous route to passage taken by the assault weapons ban 25 years ago illustrates just how perfectly the legislative stars must align for contentious gun measures to become law. It also shows what such an effort entails. True bipartisanship, a committed White House, a readiness on all sides to compromise, and a willingness by some lawmakers to take a significant political risk. Now a history footnote. Congress did not reauthorize a 10-year assault weapons ban. On September 13, 2004, exactly 10 years after the crime bill was signed, the sale and manufacture of assault weapons was legal once again. And exactly one month after the ban ended, it came up during the presidential campaign debate. On October 13, 2004, moderator Bob Schieffer asked President George W. Bush, running for re-election against Democrat John Kerry, this question. You said that if Congress would vote to extend the ban on assault weapons, that you'd sign the legislation. But you did nothing to encourage the Congress to extend it. Why not? Uh, actually, I uh, made my intentions, uh, my, my views clear. I did think we ought to extend the assault weapons ban and was told the fact that the bill was never going to move because the Republicans and Democrats were against the assault weapon ban, people of both parties. I believe law-abiding citizens ought to be able to own a gun. I believe in background checks uh, at gun shows or anywhere to make sure that guns don't get in the hands of people that shouldn't have them. But the best way to protect our citizens from guns is to prosecute those who commit crimes with guns. What's next? Glenn Thrush of the New York Times wrote in June 2022 that the ban, a central policy goal of Democrats after a spate of mass shootings, was allowed to expire so quietly without the party mounting a major effort to preserve its most consequential gun control achievement in decades is increasingly a matter of puzzlement and outrage. Meantime, Matt Viser and Mike DeBonis of the Washington Post also wrote this in June 2022. Even Senator Dianne Feinstein, who with Biden led the effort to include the ban in the sweeping 1994 crime bill, is not focusing on a restoration. Instead, she has advocated for a new bill raising the minimum age for the purchase of assault weapons and high-capacity magazines from 18 to 21. As an example, here's Senator Feinstein during a June 15, 2022 Judiciary Committee hearing held after the Uvalde, Texas school shooting. This country is no stranger to the horror of gun violence and its impact on our nation's children. Just last month in Texas, 19 children and two teachers were killed by a teenager with an assault weapon. Only 10 days before that, 10 people were killed at a grocery store in Buffalo by a teenager with an assault weapon. I think we deserve better than this. And I've reintroduced the Age 21 Act. This bill would prohibit the sale of assault weapons and high-capacity magazines to anyone under the age of 21. If this bill had been law, it would have prevented the teenagers in both Buffalo and Uvalde from legally purchasing the weapons they later used to kill a combined 31 people, including 19 children. I really deeply believe, I've been on this committee for a long time, that we need common sense reforms like the Age 21 Act to protect our children. Many of the voices you've heard in this podcast from 30 years ago, you still hear today. And that leads to this episode's bonus clip featuring a new voice. You might have wondered why Senator Feinstein's assault weapons ban passed the Senate in 1993 by a majority vote and not subject to a filibuster meaning it would have needed 60 votes. For the answer, 
we fast forward to present day. On January 12, 2022, Chris Murphy, the Democratic senator from Connecticut who is currently at the center of the gun debate in Congress, is addressing his colleagues on the Senate floor. The topic is changing the Senate filibuster rules. It didn't used to be that the filibuster, the 60-vote threshold, was applied to everything. Up until the 1970s, cloture votes were almost non-existent in the Senate. Big things routinely passed with 50 votes. In ni- Think about this. In 1994, Senator Feinstein forced a vote here on one of the most controversial topics that we could talk about, a ban on assault weapons. It received, in 1994, fewer votes than did the Manchin-Toomey background checks bill 30 years later. But the assault weapons ban, arguably way more controversial than the background checks bill, passed and became law. Well, the background checks bill didn't. Why? Because in 1994, many important votes, even the assault weapons ban, were allowed to proceed on a majority vote basis. That all changed, mostly when Democrats won the Senate in 2007 and Barack Obama was elected president. That's it for this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly. A reminder, you can do your own searches in the C-SPAN video library. Just go to cspan.org and use the search bar on top. Find more top moments from the many years Congress has debated and voted on guns and also search for other landmark legislation. Thanks for listening and happy searching.